Hey, this is Kevin Carr, CEO of Pro to CEO, and I want to talk to you career crossovers. That's the people who are thinking about crossing over into entrepreneurship. And then I want to talk to also at the same time, my entrepreneurs, my Pro to CEOers, the people who are really trying to become that CEO. They're in it and they've left their job and they're trying to come up. This is for you. So what I want to tell you today is about the three tips to avoid becoming an entrepreneur. Three things I want you to avoid becoming an entrepreneur. Look, I've done it. I made the leap. It was not easy. We're years into it now. And I'm going to tell you a few quick things I wish somebody would have told me before I got going. Well, the first one is it may cost you and you won't like the sound of this one, you won't like it at all, but it may cost you three times as much, if not more, to get going what you want in terms of your dream, your business, your opportunity. It may cost you even more than that. And I know because I went through that. Listen, I saved and I had a fund and I knew what I wanted to spend and I had an idea of what I thought, but what I didn't anticipate, it would take longer to get it going, way longer than I wanted it to. And I had enough resources, I thought at least, to get it going. But what I found was there were all kinds of costs that came up that I really, really wasn't, not say prepared for, I just didn't wanna spend that much in order to keep this thing going. So one of the things I will tell you is make sure you have a nest egg that can carry you through the potential of you not getting where you want to be right away. My first client went right out the gate with secured contractual everything. But what I didn't anticipate when we were done, the actual person doing the position to make sure I got paid actually left the company, had everything in writing and everything started going. We did the work. We're done. We're waiting on our payment. It was a sizable payment. It really would help us with payroll and keeping things going. Man, the term slow pay, they defined it. Literally, no one knew what was going on. Everyone put the blamer syndrome on that person who left. That person is no longer there. I'm sitting there uh, with a contract going through the process of who do I talk to? Who do I talk to? Who do I talk to? Everybody's pointing fingers saying it wasn't me. It wasn't me. You got to talk to this person, that person, that person. Six weeks later, no payment. 90 days later, almost three months, no payment. Literally had to move towards a lawyer sending something to someone at that institution to ensure that we got paid. Guess what? In the end, we did get paid, but I paid for it because I had to dip into something I didn't want to. Um, I had other things going, but that was a sizable one I knew that would carry us several months because we had done a lot of great work and I didn't have it. So therefore, that's my tip, making sure that you save at least three times as much as you anticipate. And I got more to add to that, but I just want to make sure you understand that. The second thing is you don't know what you don't know yet. So you got to be really coachable. Take time to listen to other people, get feedback, get insights on that industry that you're trying to be dominant in, that you want to see at the table now. You want to come in and you want to get deals and contracts and you want opportunities take the time to continue once you're in it not just to do the work but keep studying it keep trying to figure out where the opportunity is go to people who have been at it a long time who are willing to share and say to them look i don't know exactly what i don't know and i'm here wanting to get some information go online research even if you not seen something in a little while Go back to it and refresh yourself. There's always a little tip in that, and I tend to do that myself, that I become a student of what I'm doing. And I look at other people's businesses. I look at mine. I say, could we benefit by doing that? A lot of cross-training is what I mean. Diversifying and you know, digging in and really looking to make yourself a student of that business and really trying to figure out where your lane of opportunities there is because you have a lot of competition now. 
and you've got to put your best business out there. And sometimes we don't do enough homework and study. And even when we're in the work, we don't continue to study and try to figure out and learn new people. I always save room in my schedule for what I call focus time. So I'm an early riser. I get up after I get um, the kids off to school. I'm focus time for at least two hours of things that sort of allow me to grow and develop and really dig into things I don't know. I look into things that are happening domestically, internationally, um, things that happen in this industry that are at the top periodicals and the top uh, websites for me to go visit. I look on YouTube. I look on um, because I'm in sports, I look at all the leagues and seeing if there's any things that have happened. I look at the digital newsletters that are out that are very educational now, and I spend a little time. I often use that time to look at some of my friends who are in the industry, and I look at what they're doing on their platform, social media, and say, oh, okay, wow, that's cool. God, is it, you see what I mean? I don't know what I don't know. So I take the time to really go in and focus and say, what else can I learn so I can be great at that and really get going. And the last tip I wanna do and really emphasize this, don't be afraid of the work. At the end of the day, I have this mindset philosophy that I want to be close to exhausted in the thing that I love to do. Now that I've elected to go into this industry and I'm spending money, like I said, I'm out here researching and then you gotta put in the work. You have to design the time to make sure you have the margin to do the work. If you're scheduling on top of scheduling meeting after meeting and you don't put in work time to do work, that's why I put that focus time and then I put it in at the back of my day, then I'm literally not able to work on that and do that and literally just say, look, I don't have uh, enough time to get the work done. You cannot say that. And excuse me in the video back there, my daughter looked um, in really quick. And that happens when you have a home office and you built a really good space. And a lot of times they can't hear me in here doing this, but that happens, you know, that it happens. And what I will tell you is you've got to make sure you put margin in your schedule so you can get the work done. If you're not literally just meeting all day, taking notes, you know, sending an email here and there, they ain't going to get it. If you've promised your client a document, if you promise your client a project and you're not close to that, that can put a little bit of a damper on your brand. And if you do that too much, the client is not going to understand that. And guess what? You may not get to contract renewal. So what I want you to do is make sure as a entrepreneur, you're not so busy just going out there for the hunt. That's the fun part, doing lunches, going up and following up with calls sometimes, um, making sure that you're putting together a real marketing deck. That's part of the work, but also when you're also working with someone that you're creating the design time with your client. You're making sure you're doing the follow-up and follow-through for your client. You're making sure that your clients, uh, if you've promised to add value to them, that you're doing things that allow you to add value to what you or what they want to do and you're really on top of it. If you're not doing that, then you're not going to be, in my opinion, as successful as you want to be. So the three things, let me run them down. First, make sure you save enough three times as much to make sure that you've got yourself at least covered to anticipate what uh, you don't uh, can't anticipate happening. The second thing is you don't know what you don't know. So you got to be a student of the game. You got to do research. You got to take some time and have focus time and really have enough, you know, uh, research and development time to make sure you're good. The third thing is literally making sure you have time for the work. Uh, if you're out, just out and not really putting in the work, you won't have the ability to convert and be on time with your work. You won't have the ability to work with your clients if you don't schedule the work. And if you don't schedule them into your work, if you need them, um, you gotta make sure that you design it where you can succeed. And if you don't do some of these simple things, it will drag your business productivity and your business profitability will not go get where you want it to be because you don't have accountability built in. You should have accountability on what you anticipate spending, 
what you anticipate doing to get better, and then having accountability around having the time designed to get the work done and to perform the work at an optimal level. That's my tips. Uh, those are my tips for you. This is Kevin Carr, CEO, Pro to CEO, where transition is our mission. Hope you like this. Simple, easy to grasp. I got more videos for my corporate climbers, for my career crossovers, and my Pro to CEO. Those two audiences, the Pro to CEOs and my corporate climbers, this video is for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Continue to add a comment, anything you need, and I'm here to help. Take care, be well, and have a blessed day.